We are back once again. It is day 87 of daily leap code. And yeah, it's just interesting, man. Life is truly interesting. You know, I always look back and I think like, yeah, I'm making these videos and yeah, it's cool to see it. The grind is it's very cool to see the grind, but I think it's also also got to, you know, there's also more. I think at the end of the day, the goal, right, the grind is important. It's important to do things that are hard. But I think it's also important to see it. it's not the only thing, right? Ultimately, this is a tool, you know, just a tool or part of, you know, living a full and a balanced life. And so, yeah, I look back on these videos and I think, I feel like, you know, well, looking back every video, like I always start with a strange intro, but it's just interesting because I think as a viewer, maybe it's strange to see the bouncing up and down of uh, different like ideas or methods or just like my mental state or something like that. But I think maybe that's, I maybe, maybe I'm just thinking, but maybe I think everyone is like that to some extent and we're all just sort of like, you know, maybe there's, maybe there, maybe there, maybe it's just easier to see mine because I'm uh, talking about it. But yeah, some days I'll think this, some days I'll think another thing. And yeah, I guess it's just one of those days where I'm just thinking or feeling, I guess, an immense gratitude for the people in my life. So yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just interesting to think about. But yeah, I'm just, yeah, just grateful. It's just very, uh, just an, another part of things to think about. But yeah, don't want to dilly dally there too much. So yeah, it's just cool. P people are cool. And humans, humans, our fellow algorithms, just very, very cool to see. So yeah, we have more problems to do today. So Yesterday we were doing some easies. We are the LC Decimation Squad. I'm renaming the Discord. The HCC is being disbanded. The Hyperbolic Coding Chamber, the Coalition, is no more. We're now being rebranded to the Hyperbolic Easy or the the L the e LC Easy Extinction Committee. So. If you are in the Discord and you're doing mediums and hards, you gotta go. Because this is an LC Easy only Discord. So I'm just trolling, but yeah, uh, we're doing LC Easies. We'll see how long we can do this. But I'm not gonna lie, it's fun to do them. There's like a small challenge and we're still on our recovery, recovery run and it feels good and I think that's the goal. You know, it just doesn't always feel good, but uh, we're just trying to, you know, make progress and make sure that things are going well. And part of that sometimes is walking so you can run. So that's what we're doing today. That's what we've been doing. So I don't know how long this will continue. Maybe, honestly, it feels good. You know, uh, long days of the grind, I think. Or, yeah, well, I don't want to say the grind anymore, but long days of working at something. It is tough. It is tough. I yeah, And my sleep schedule has been all over the place. It is being fixed nonetheless. But it feels good to do the recovery run. We're not making as much progress as we'd like to be, but I think that's kind of the goal with, you know, these atomic instances of progress, right? Even if we're moving even like 0.5% per day might be kind of discouraging, right? We're still moving. And I think there's a multiplicative force to doing something consistently. So hopefully we're benefiting on some of those gains just from the things that we're learning, staying, staying on our forebrain. So... Yeah, I'm going to keep working at these problems. We did path sum in Pascal's triangle yesterday, which were fun. And there, I'm also realizing that the LC easies are like, also, I thought, or someone else put this best, but they said LC easies test you on basic concepts, mediums test you on multiple concepts, right? And then uh, hards, I think, are either, you know, it's usually a combination of two me uh, multiple medium concepts, right? And... So there definitely is, like Thomas said, something to being thrown into the water and learning how to swim. But I also think that uh, there's also something just being able to practice the steps, right? Ultimately, at the end of the day, if you have the ability to take your time, right, and make sure you stay consistent, I think it's always a good uh, route. I, mean, I might be biased, right? Because I'm on day 87 here, very, very much biased. But it's a habit I'd like to continue. I'm thinking towards the future to maybe something 
crazy like day 10,000. That would just be cool to see. I'd be 50. Maybe I'd still be alive. Maybe I wouldn't. Maybe Thomas is now making the videos for the channel. And maybe the HCC, the Hyperbolic Coding Coalition, is now just making the daily videos and it goes on until the end of time, even when we have AIs <laughs> that do the problems for us. And yeah, I got a message uh, from a family member who mentioned that the <laughs> my rants in the beginning of these videos sound like I'm going <laughs> I'm going mad. And I promise you I'm not. It's just that there's a, there's a way that I, it's just uh, funny to think about because I always rant before the video starts and some of the stuff we've said a million times so I'm just kind of skipping portions but when you tune in kind of here and there it just sounds it just sounds uh, I don't know it just sounds like I'm going mad so but oh, we have to be mad to some degree to think about doing 10,000 days of this so that is the goal and yeah maybe I was got sidetracked but the goal is just i think there's a lot of cool things we got to test here like you know pulling a path out of a B bfs right and just like also you know a leaf node i never really knew what a leaf node was before despite doing problems like coin change and other stuff so i think it's just interesting to see how some of these small problems can test us but either way we have binary tree pre-order and post order which i'm sure we'll be able to do today uh, we have, so I'll load these up. They're already loaded up. Wow, I loaded up a bunch. Uh, we, we already did Paths on. We did Pascal's Triangle. And we're going to do Excel Sheet Column Title, which I, I swear I've done. Oh, we're doing Column Number. We're going to remove linked elements and isomorphic strings. And, yeah, we'll just keep going through. We shall keep going through. Make sure to join the LC Easy extinction extinction squad okay and we're gonna have enforcers in the discord checking your profiles and we're actually gonna have an ai an instance of gpt3 that's been fused with dolly that's going to be inspecting user profiles and making sure that we're doing only lc easy so you're going to want to make sure to join the discord to be part of that inspection process but uh we have 30 minutes on the clock today and that is going to be the goal and yeah, let's just jump into it. So let's do it. So we have, I think it was binary tree pre-order and post-order traversal first. So given the root of a binary tree, return the pre-order traversal of its nodes values. So pre-order actually has to do with a version of a DFS, which has to do with the relative ordering of the nodes that you visit. And pre-order, I think, means that the node that we process first is going to be uh, the first part, and then we'll visit the left and right children. So I think pre-order means N, L, R, and we can test that, right, because we have an example, and we've given this binary tree here, and it seems that uh, we have one, our output is one, two, and three, and if we do N, so print one, right, can't go left, so we go right, then we print two, Right, then we go left, right, then we print three, can't go left, can't go right, go back to two, we can't go right. So this is L and R. I think if there was a node here, we'd actually get one, two, three, four. So I think we do have it set up correctly. We have root and output. Root is equal to one. So we have two examples. The tree looks like it can also not have any elements and it can have one element. So we're just gonna say, right, return the pre-order traversal of its nodes values. So we just have to return an array of numbers. So we're just gonna say, right, return empty array, right, if root equals a nil. So if it's empty, we just return an empty array. Otherwise, we wanna do our pre-order traversal, right, and we can define a function called pre-order, which is going to take a node, Right, and we're also going to define an array, right, which is going to get set to an empty array to start. We're going to call pre-order with the root and pass in array, and we should be able to return the array. So, the goal for this would be for the pre-order function, the recursive function, to process all the nodes in the tree and place them in the array. Then we could return it. 
So it looks like we'll have to make sure that the node does, does exist. So if node does not equal null, right, then we're going to say, and we're actually missing a parameter here, which is going to be the array. We're going to say r dot push node dot val. And then we're going to do pre-order with node dot left and r and pre-order with node dot right and r. Then we'll have end. And I think this should make sense. We're given an array. We do pre-order. We push a value onto the array. Then we go left with pre-order. Then we go right. So this does make sense to start. So this would be linear time with linear space. And they mentioned that the recursive solution is trivial. Could you do it iteratively? So I think we could do it iteratively if we were to use a stack. But we'll keep our beginning pro portion again. Right. If there's no tree, right, then uh, return empty array if root equals nil. Otherwise, uh, right, how does a DFS work? It works by using the implicit recursion stack that is created just by how functions are called, I guess, by nesting them. So all we have to do, I think, to do this iteratively or sans recursion is to use a stack to mimic recursion. So we'll have a stack, and how could we mimic this recursive call, right? So basically, whenever we pull a node, our stack is going to start with root to start, by the way, I forgot. So let's imagine we have a stack which starts with root, right? We want to make sure we do NLR. So what we could do is when we first get an element off the stack, we can push it onto the array, right? We're going to need an array because we always return an array for this problem. Right, we're going to need an array. So what if we, as soon as we pull an element off the stack or put, pop an element off the top of the stack, we add the value. That would give us one in the array to start, which looks like kind of exactly what we're aiming for. Right, but now I want to make sure that we go as far left as we can before coming back to going right. So to do that, we kind of want to create a, a trap for this cursive function, and I think we can do that by using the stack and a current node. So we'll say cur equals null, and we're going to say we want this while loop to run while cur does not equal null or stack isn't empty. Right, so now we have this current node. Right, it's going to be null to, it's going to be, oh, I said null, it's going to be nil to start because the way we get the current node, right, it's going to be by pulling it off the stack. Actually, maybe, no, yeah, we're definitely going to want it. We'll try to do it this way. So we'll pull it off the stack, like we said. We pull it off the stack, we can push it onto the array, the value of it at least, if it exists. From there, we want to go as far left as we can while keeping track of the next nodes we want to visit. So maybe we can do something like this, where we'll say cur is going to be equal to stack dot pop if cur does not equal nil. Or actually, now we're going to push, well, we want to make sure it exists, right? But, for, but we want to add it onto the array like we said, because we're doing end first. We'll do r dot push cur dot val if cur if curd is not equal nil. So we push that value onto the array. But then we could have a while loop that makes us go as far left as we can, right? And we'll say while, after we push that value on, we're gonna wanna say, um, hmm. After we push that value on, now we want to go as far left as we can. I think we want to use a while loop for that. So 
So now I'm thinking it actually might be easier if we save the or, uh, the stack dot popping part for once we can't go left anymore. So in this case, what if we did something like this, where instead of the stack starting with root, what if cur equaled root, right? And then what you would do to start is you would say, well, cur does not equal nil, right? We're now going to do r, like we said before, r dot push, right? Cur dot val. Then we can do cur dot, we could go cur dot left, but we want to push it onto the stack. Yeah, we want to push it onto the stack so that we can eventually go right. Mm, this is a tricky one. While cur does not equal nil, r dot push cur dot val.
Okay, after four, after three minutes of silence, I think we've figured this out. If we do r dot push cur dot value, right, then we're gonna push the value, right, that we currently have onto the array. From here, what we can do is do stack dot push, right, pushing the value of cur back onto the array, I mean back onto the stack, or putting it onto the stack right and if we do that right afterwards we can do cur equals cur dot left to go left right and then do end eventually we're going to see that cur dot left right cur dot left is null so we're going to need a new value for cur right and to get that new value we're going to have to do cur equals stack dot pop right to get that value and then afterwards we can do cur equals cur dot right and so i think this should work because if we follow this right we'll do cur equals root right root is not null so we're going to go into the while loop right cur isn't null again so we do r dot push one or we're going to push one onto the stack and then go left well now left is nil right so we're going to come out here and do cur equals stack dot pop. Well, the only thing on the stack was one, right? Now we're going to do cur equals cur dot right and go to two, right? But right, cur isn't nil, right? So we're going to go back into this again and say, okay, cur isn't nil again. And then we're going to say r dot push two, right? Push two onto the stack and then go left, right? And then... We're going to say cur does not equal nil, so we're going to do r dot push three, right? And then we're going to do stack dot push three, and then do cur equals cur dot left, right? But now left is nil, so we're going to go back to three. So going back to three. Oh, since left was nil, right? We're going to end up out here and do cur equals stack dot pop. So now we're going to be three, right? Except we're going to go right, except right is null, is nil. So we're going to go back to the top and say, well, cur does equal nil, but our stack isn't empty because it still has two in it. Then we're going to say, okay, well, while cur doesn't equal nil, well, uh, it is nil, so we're going to skip this. Then we're going to do cur equals stack dot pop. So now cur is equal to two, and then cur is equal to cur dot right, which is nil, which is now cur is nil and stack is empty. And we should return array. So I feel confident about this. Let me check if there's any syntax errors remaining. Works for the first case. Let's go. So yeah, it took me some thinking to figure this out, but it looks like this works. It looks like this, but the stack really is, is a, like, like we said, a method to fake the like recursion you get or the, uh, last in first out you get with regular function calls or stacking or i guess recursion but what the stack truly does is stage the node for the final phase there's three phases right n l r or one two and three and i think you could get in order right l n r if you just did r dot push up here but you get pre-order and LR by putting it in here and I think if we wanted to do post order which is LRN it would still be the same except how would we do post order I think you would just do r dot push at the end here uh, right before you do cur dot right because now we'll be back at the node we originally started at. So this is our spot to do r dot push. This would be linear time in terms of the visiting the entire tree. 
linear space as well. So, yes. I wonder if that's what we did. We didn't do the Morris traversal. I don't really know how that works. So, yes, that is that will suffice. And I think now we're doing post order. Now we can test our we just mentioned, right? And we're going to do return empty array if root equals nil, and then return empty array if root equals nil. Then we're going to have a stack like we just did, right? But it's going to be empty to start, and we're going to have cur, which is going to start at root while cur does not equal nil or stack dot length does not equal zero right then we're in business we're also going to have that empty array right which we slowly fill with values and like we mentioned before right what we can do is say uh, while cur does not equal nil right what we're going to do is do post order which is l r n and to do that means we're just going to have to do uh, stack dot push cur and then cur equals cur dot left right going as far left as we can from here right we're gonna say cur after this while loop right we can guarantee that cur is nil and say cur equals stack dot pop now that we have that we want to go as far right as we can I'm gonna go as far right as we can. And what I mentioned earlier makes no sense about just moving that because I think we're gonna need another while loop. Say so while cur does not equal no, we're gonna do stack dot push cur, which is one. Then we're gonna push one on and then go as far right as we can until we can't anymore. And then from here, we can finally do cur equals stack dot pop. Or I guess what we could say is r dot push stack dot pop dot val. So let's check if this makes sense. All right, we start with root. All right, root isn't nil. The stack isn't empty. Well, stack is empty, so right, cur does not equal nil because it equals root. So we're at one. We want to go as far left as we can. We can't really go far, right? But we push one on anyway onto the stack, and then we get to nil. Now we're out here. Cur equals stack dot pop. We're back at one. We want to go as far right as we can. So we go. We push one back onto the stack, and then we go right to two, right? Go right, we push one back on, then we go right to two, then two isn't null, so we push two onto the stack, and then we go right, which is null, so now we're at end. Hmm. I'm going to go left. So after we we pull one off the stack, 
right? Then we go to two, right? Because that's what's happening here, right? We get to nil, right? Once we get to nil, we, get, we pull one off the stack, right? So now we're sitting at one. One isn't nil, so we push one back onto the stack. And then we go right as far as we can to two, right? But the problem being we're still going right. And we, now we want to start going left again. So maybe we were right. If we say cur equals cur dot right. one then we say cur equals cur dot right which equals two now we don't want to push two here because our thing would be all out of order basically want to push at the end. Oh, there's a re the reason we don't want the while loop is because once you go to the next node, the cycle restarts. So you want to start going left again. So if we do cur equals cur dot right, we're actually on the right track here. But we don't want to push yet. You want to go left. I think we could come up with a ghetto version. What if we do cur equals stack dot pop? Now we're at one. We do cur equals right. If we were to push the elements onto the array and I think reverse it, I think we would get the right answer. So if we did r dot push. cur dot bow and then cur equals right we'd go left as far as we could right pushing two on then pushing three on then we'd be nil then we do stack dot pop
I think this could be schemey way. If we go left, right, then right, which means we have to go left. We go left, then right, then left, then right, and then n. Now we have to print three. I think the problem is when we do cur dot right, we end up. We want to print the node, but we've already popped it off the stack. I think what we want to do is actually not necessarily take it off the stack. What if we just get the element at the end of it? You just say cur equals stack minus one. And then what we could do is just say cur equals cur dot right. Right, so if we went left, right, came back, we'd be at one. Now we go right, right, cur equals last element on the stack, which is one, then to the right. Well, one is still on the stack, right? And then we can do cur equals, cur does not equal nil. And the stack isn't empty. So then we're gonna go as far left as we can, pushing two onto the stack. and then three onto the stack. Well, that's actually not what we want to do. We actually don't want to go, we actually don't want to go, I think I figured it out. This loop right here is the end portion of the processing, I think, by where we say LRN, this is the N portion of it. Because I think what we want to do is if we say one, push one onto the stack, what if we push one onto the stack? If you push one onto the stack, Or let's just say one is the root like it usually was. We push the children that exist onto the stack to do next, right, like two. But for one, No, we're getting confused. I think this is not N. This is just how recursion works. We have L and R, you'd go L, 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 L until you can't, and then you'd go R as far as you can. And then when you couldn't, you'd go N. It's just this tree. I think it's this tree that they're giving us, which is messing us up. So we're gonna go as far left as we can. Then I think we want to go as far right as we can, because now we would be not we would be nil. Like we said, we don't we don't want this. My bindings just stopped working completely. We don't want this to stop. We don't want to pull the element off the stack actually in its location. So now we're here at one. We set, we got one off this, we kept, we peaked at the top of the stack, we got one. Now we're setting it equal to two, right? Two isn't nil. So we're gonna push two onto the stack and we're gonna to wanna to go as far right as we can. And then as soon as we can't go right anymore, what we want to do is, is right here, I think. Can't go right anymore, but our curve would be nil and our stack would actually be 
non empty, right? Cur is not e cur is equal to nil. So we would look at the top of the stack, which would be right now would be two. Oh no no no! Yeah, right now it would be two. So I think what, maybe what we're doing is too simple. All right, we push two onto the stack, but maybe what we also want to do is push its child onto the stack as well. Right, because we'd be at two. What if we pushed on three onto the stack as well? That way when we got out here, right, once we equal null and we pull the element off the stack, the next one we'd visit would actually be three and we could just push that onto the array. So what if we did that? And would actually push cur dot left and then down here we could do r dot push stack dot pop dot val. So let's see if this makes sense, right? Cur is equal to root, right? Cur isn't equal to nil, because it equals one. So we push one onto the stack, we go left, it's now nil. Now we're gonna set cur equal to the top of the stack, which is one, and to the right, which is two. Now, two is not nil, so we push on two onto the stack, and three. And then we go right. But cur is now nil, so now we're gonna push stack.pop.val, which is three. So we probably don't want to do stack dot pop. I think we want to do stacks of negative one dot val. And then or we can just do basically cur equals stack dot pop. And then we can just do cur dot val. Because at three, we'd then like to go even further if it exists, but both its children is are null. So the cur not, not equal to null. It is not we go to three, so it wouldn't be null. So we'd go left, so we'd push three onto the stack. Again, we'd go left, right, then it'd be equal to three again, we'd go right. Push three on. We should only put these, push these on if they exist. So let's give this a shot. Line 27, unexpected local variable or method. Oh, I'm supposed to reverse this. Stack dot push cart left if cur dot left does not equal no. Looks like we run forever. Which does make sense. Yeah, we're running forever, so this is a problem. I think that's a wrap on today. I'm surprised this one is giving me so much trouble, but we shall be back tomorrow. I think I'm running out of brain juice, so we'll be back tomorrow and see if we can solve this.